But before we get to the backdoor adjustment, we must cover the modularity assumption, which is a very important assumption in the kinds of causal models that we'll be looking at. First, we must define what we mean by a causal mechanism. So, the causal mechanism for x sub i will denote as p of x i given parents of x i. So, this conditional distribution is sometimes what people mean when they say causal mechanism. We'll see this more specifically later on in this lecture. And graphically, this looks like this. Okay, so you can think of the causal mechanism for a specific variable in a causal graph as all of the parents of that variable and the, their arrows into that variable. That's the mechanism that generates that variable. With causal mechanism defined, we can give the intuition for the modularity assumption. This is that if we intervene on a node x sub i, then the only mechanism that changes is the mechanism for x sub i. All other mechanisms for any other variables remain completely unchanged. In other words, the causal mechanisms are modular. Right, so changing the causal mechanism for one variable doesn't change the causal mechanisms for any of the other variables. Interventions are local, in a sense. This assumption goes by many names, one of which is independent mechanisms, so the mechanisms are independent in the sense that changing one doesn't change any of the others. Autonomy is another one. The mechanisms are autonomous in the sense that they don't need to rely on each other. And another name is invariant. So all mechanisms are invariant to changes in any of the other mechanisms. That's the intuition for the modularity assumption, and now we'll write it down a bit more formally. If we intervene on a set of nodes S, where S here is, we write it as a subset of bracket N, where bracket N just means 1 to N. So this set of nodes is just, we're picking out the indices of the nodes that we're intervening on. So if we intervene on this set S, setting them to constants, say, then for all I, we have the following. If the ith node is not in the intervention set, then the mechanism for that node remains unchanged. The conditional probability stays the same. But if i is in the intervention set S, then the probability of little x i, given its parents, is going to be 1 if little x i is the value that the random variable x i was set to by the intervention, and that probability of xi given its parents will be zero if little xi is inconsistent with the value that big xi was set to by the intervention. Okay, so that was a bit of a mouthful, so take a bit to make sure you understand what I just said. Another way of saying this is that if little xi is the value that the random variable xi was set to by the intervention, then we say that little xi is consistent with the intervention. This is terminology that we'll be using later. Okay, so that is the modularity assumption for causal graphs. One of the main consequences of the modularity assumption is that it allows us to efficiently encode many different interventional distributions. To see what I mean by that, we'll consider the graphs of a bunch of different interventional distributions. So, say the observational data is generated by this graph. Then, if we want to write down the graph for some interventional data, we just duplicate this graph. We then pick the variable that we want to intervene on, and we're going to set this variable to a specific value, so it no longer will have parents in the causal graph when we're looking at the interventional data. And importantly, the only factor that changes in this interventional distribution is the factor for the variable we intervened on, in this case t. That factor now becomes 1 for values consistent with the intervention, and 0 for values inconsistent with the intervention. And the modularity assumption tells us that all other factors remain exactly the same. Moreover, we call this graph where the edges into the intervened variable t are deleted, 
We call this the manipulated graph. For one more example of an interventional distribution for this observational data, consider that we intervene on the, v the variable t2. Then, what do we do to get the manipulated graph for this interventional distribution? We just delete the edges going into t2. And the only factor that changes is the factor for t2. All other factors remain exactly the same as they were for the observational data. So in this slide, we've seen what it would mean if the modularity assumption is true. And it might be helpful to see what it would look like if the modularity assumption is violated. That would mean that if we were to intervene on t, not only would that change the distribution for t given its parents, but it would also change other conditional distributions, such as the conditional distribution for t2 given its parents. Another way of saying this is that intervening on the mechanism for t also changes the mechanism for t2. In a sense, the intervention is not local. The mechanisms are not modular. That's what it might look like if the modularity assumption were violated.